Good morning, and welcome to the Monday Morning Brief for December 1st. I'm Jeff Stark, Senior Editor, World Coins at CoinWorld. Earlier this month, within a span of 24 hours, the Royal Canadian Mint and the Perth Mint issued 66 coins combined. Topics are narrowly focused, like Canadian history, and of wider interest, like baby animals and expanding options on popular bullion programs. 66 coins in 24 hours, and that's just from the two most active world mints. One can't help but bear witness to the daily announcements of new coins without asking if there are parallels to the sports card market of the late 1980s and early 1990s. As a child, I witnessed the market for modern baseball cards as it peaked and ultimately collapsed. What are some parallels? First, technology. The moment of change for baseball cards was the release of the 1989 Upper Deck set. These cards were printed on glossy stock on a white background, a revolution that was more notable than it seems today. This soon developed into gold foil and hologram versions and so many other special, putatively rare issues. The real driver of interest in the 1989 Upper Deck cards was the heralded arrival of Ken Griffey Jr. to the major leagues. The certain Hall of Famer commanded attention from the get-go, and finding his baseball card was a winning lottery ticket. The card soared in value, and so did unopened packs. Technology in coins has left its mark in two ways. First, over the last few years, the adoption of digital sculpting technology has minimized the time it takes to create designs and dies. There's a reason the Royal Canadian Mint has issued some 200 coins this year. Because it can. It's no longer bound by the traditional constraints. Second, Technology has also resulted in so many coins featuring something extra, like gold plating, holograms, color, embedded jewels, even being struck in non-traditional shapes, like the pyramid coins from the Pop Joy Mint. Another parallel is the crowded market. The 1989 Upper Deck set opened the floodgates for baseball card companies as Major League Baseball and the Players Association rapidly expanded the number of card licenses, cashing in as competing companies sprouted up to offer more glitz and hype. Over the past few years, there has been an explosion in the number of private companies launching collector coins, and the number of coins coming from World Mints has also risen. Coins are seen as cash cows with built-in markets, especially when leveraging licensed brands like Harry Potter, Disney, Doctor Who, and the Transformers, to name a few. When will those cash cows run dry, and are they giving sour milk? While there are several parallels between both markets, one thing that differentiates coins, uh, modern issues, from the baseball card market, that's the material. The silver and gold in many of the modern new issues, but not all, provide a floor for the coin's value, even if that floor seems to be moving ever downward in recent months. When you open a pack of cards, the euphoria of discovering what's inside soon dissipates, and all you're left with is paper pyrite and the occasional cardboard gold. Now let's see what's inside. No King Griffey Jr. rookie card. Maybe next time. For CoinWorld, I'm Jeff Stark. Happy collecting.